once again we have rain upon us and you probably heard the kiddo inside she's doing her lessons and right now she's actually learning about weather rain sleet tornadoes hurricanes all those things so makes it kind of uh, fitting I guess So if you've been with us long enough, you already know that during heavy weather days, <laughs> all of our projects are outside and it, it kind of puts a, a wrench in the works, right? So uh, our cogs cannot spin freely when they have a wrench in them. So but that's okay. Uh, we're still going to do some of the things that we can do which is fish <laughs> doesn't matter if you're getting wet right now there, there there are some things that we can do which i actually want to bring you along uh, i want to show you some tips and tricks of something well i guess it's not tips and tricks but we are going to build one but I want to show you first, but before we get there, stick around because I still wanted to give you an update of some of the projects that are going on. And gathering house site still looks the same. I was able to get, you know, quite a bit of the water out of the holes, but with more rain coming, as you can see, that's just groundwater. So even though you no know, water has gotten out of the holes, that's just the water that has seeped back in. And we got us a boat. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's just pure groundwater. That, that's come back up. Actually, it doesn't get as, as much coming up the hill. All right. So that's why those holes are a little, little better. But anyway... We'll get back to this when we can, uh, once we're able to get these holes dug out a little better. Yep, mom and dad still need a roof on the shed room. Anybody who would like to help with that, we just cannot afford to do the roof currently. So if anybody's wanting to help with that, or you have materials that you built to let us have or, or whatnot, and we can repay that back with a barter system, let us know, because that needs a roof. So coming over here, you can see Lil Mac is gone. Where, what happened to Lil Mac? I don't see him nowhere. <laughs> well, Dad's actually been working on my lawnmower, trying to get it running uh, a little gooder. But, and then you can see I got some supplies here. We'll get back to that later. Oh, there's Lil Mac. He's behind the truck. Yep, truck's still non-operational. I actually need to get a few more things for this. And then uh, we'll get going on that, but we also need it to stop raining. So this, yes, old Lil Mac, is still leaks oil a little bit, which this is more on the, the blow-by. So there's like a, a tube that comes out of the top of the engine, and it, whenever it gets overheated, oil starts spilling out. And whenever I was using this on the driveway, because it's not rated for this <laughs> um, it getting a, it ended up getting overheated if I can speak and it started you know blowing a lot of the oil out a lot of the water had got evaporated out so I kind of figured out obviously it still has its, its issues right but we're gonna go ahead and, and just keep checking on the oil keep checking on the water keep checking on the tire pressures back tires have tubes Front tires do not. I still need tubes for that because uh, this one likes to keep going flat. Um, but we got to check the all that stuff every single time we go to use it or every single day. And then, yeah, we're, we're just going to use it. Either it's going to blow up or it's not. So it is what it is. Still getting some good fishing in into the pond. Matter of fact, mom and dad are, are fishing right now, but they're over in the creek. Not this area of the creek, over where the big culverts are. But there is something that I want to show you, something that I had made that I've been wanting uh, to have for a while. 
I wanted to buy one and then I got to do a little bit more research and I was like, you know what? I actually have the stuff I need that I can build one. And uh, so let's get over here to the creek, over here to the bridge. You can probably already see I have the, the little string there on the right hand side of the bridge as it comes up. So let's get you guys set in and uh, let's go see what we got. So I went ahead and put us together a little trap for crawfish. Which apparently it also picks up fish. <laughs> but uh, you see in there I got one, two, three, four, four crawfish. They're just little tiny guys and a flopping fish. But yeah, if you want to see how I made it, then uh, let's go back over to the shop and we'll go make another one. But I'm gonna put this back in the water. So see if we can't get some more. Okay, welcome back over here to the shop. So, you see I got me some hardware cloth and it is gonna be a little windy. I do have my microphone on today, so you know, hopefully it's picking up sound. I know we've had issues with that uh, in the past, so we will see what's going on with that. But anyway, get your hardware, this is the half inch square hardware cloth. And a lot of times whenever you get this, obviously, or every time you get this, it's always in a roll like this. And it always wants to maintain that roundness, right? So to be able to try to get this to lay flat, or somewhat flat, okay? What you can do is you lay it down to where your hardware cloth is up towards the top of you, okay? And then you push down as you're rolling it out. And it helps flatten that down as you're going, okay? But you don't need it to be 100% flat. So what you're looking for in your tube itself is to try to get it to be right around a nine inch diameter circle, okay? So now that you got that fairly flattened out, which I had already done this off the roll that was already here, right? I didn't flatten it completely out. But, and it's fine if you have a little bit of overlap. So you just go and find out what you need to make this nine inch circle, okay? And then you'll throw a zip tie in. You'll just zip tie it together and then you can go ahead and cut off your excess after you have done a zip tie. Now I do try to overlap, you know, at least one inch. So that's two squares worth of material. So you have uh, enough to where it's going to hold it together. So let me go grab some uh, the rest of my materials, zip ties and stuff. Now, obviously, if you have some of those, like the, the metal, um, for like building rabbit hutches, to where you, is, you have the crimp, it's like a little piece of metal and you go in and you crimp it, that would actually hold up probably better than zip ties. But I don't currently have one of those. I don't have any of those materials. So uh, we're utilizing zip ties because that's what we got. So anyway, I'll be right back. Okay, so there's my my tube. Like I said, it's, it, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? You, you can make this basically whatever size you're wanting. And I'm pretty sure that there's calculators out there that you can look at to say, hey, for my rate or for my circumference of my circle, yeah, because I'm at like nine and a half. So that'd be perfectly okay. Uh, you, you can see exactly how many, you know, squares you would need to make it the exact size that you want it to be. And then you just come in here and put in some zip ties. Now since these zip ties are a little bigger, 
on some of these here, like whenever I first am, am doing it, it's just going around where they where it overlaps, just one one wire, right? But then as I start so or doing the middle part, I make it go over one full square. So I could probably bring you guys in so you can see. So like I said, this this is just going over. Focus, focus, focus. There you go. But it's just going over one wire. And then for this one, I have it going around two wires just because these are bigger zip ties. You know, the obviously they're stronger and I'm able to get a better grip with it like this than it is with this because this, it it's still loose, but it's not gonna go nowhere. But I just like the way the, the other way is for the majority. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish uh, putting zip ties on this, I'll get this done, I'll get this all cut out. And then from there, I'll bring you guys back and uh, I'll show you what we're gonna do to be able to get the cones that goes on the inside. Okay, that tube portion is finished. So I went ahead and cut off all the excess. Now on this wire, right, in case you didn't know, or just a, tips and tricks right uh, hopefully it's, it's focused I don't know but you get always like these little pieces that stick off and this is welded on every single piece so if you just take a pair of pliers I just have some lime, lineman's pliers and you bend that back and forth that's going to break off right there flush to where it needs to be right and then you don't have anything that's that's sharp. I mean, it's still somewhat sharp. It, it possibly could cut you, but it's not like this big old piece that's sticking out, right? So if you wanted to do that first before trying to attach all of your things together, you can. But this is kind of like what I did. So I, I just cut it long, and then I bend all those pieces back over that way. You know, it's it's not going to hurt me if I'm trying to move this. Now, obviously, some of these, you can see, they're still sticking out on the inside. I'm not too worried about that, right? If a crawfish is, is getting hurt <laughs> going into the cage, uh, sorry. Um, I'm eating you anyway or using you as fish bait. So, uh, there we go. So, this is what I got left over. Hopefully, I have enough. I should. So, now what you want to do is... You take your circumference of your circle, mine's about nine, nine and a half, okay? Now you double that and you make a big circle, okay? Into your net, just flat, right? So I'm gonna make at least an 18, 18 and a quarter inch circle. It, it's easiest to do that. You just get like a piece of string, get like a screw, right? I have a screw right here. Just put the screw down into your deck, right? Or whatever table or whatever you're working on, hopefully a something that you can put a screw into with a string measured out to that that measurement and then make a circle with a sharpie or just whatever you can a crayon it don't matter to make a circle that you want to cut that out after you've cut that out cut it in half and then the, those halves that's the reason why i like doing close to a nine because it it ends up being the double the size of your circumference cut it in half and then that makes the tube or makes a cone that fits perfectly inside, okay? And then you're able to cut out for the, the hole on the, the inside. So just like that, I draw a circle onto my wood uh, piece, and then I'm actually coming over into the shop because I needed to grab my staple gun. Staple gun, staple gun. So I'm just sitting there just looking at a circle. Then you take your hardware cloth, put the hardware cloth over the circle, try to get minimal amount of waste. So I put the edge of one of the circles to the other, okay? And then I come down and I staple this, okay? Down to my table, which this is just a scrap piece of wood.
try to get it as flat as possible. Okay. Kind of like that. And then now you come back in and you can follow your circle, okay, cutting your wire. So, and you can cut it a little big, it's fine. So just cut your wire going around the circle. that and you just keep going all the way around and then I'm gonna cut this in half okay so you gotta find out where where the half is by counting get your marks and then you cut it and then this half you'll you'll curl up it'll become a cone this one you'll curl up it'll become a cone and then you'll be able to zip tie it in and I'll show you how to do that so let me get this all cut out and we'll bring you right back Okay, as you can see, I have my pieces cut out, and I've got it cut in half. The other one's still actually stapled down to things. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to where the flat part is facing away from you. Hopefully you can see that okay. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to kind of roll these in. So what you're trying to get is to where those two flat parts meet. Okay. And all of this, you, you'll be able to shape it, you know, after the fact. You can even come in and shape it a little bit now. You know, just to try to get this to curve around. But what I like to do is I'll go ahead and start up here at the top. I give myself one square overlap. That way whenever I get my zip tie I'm coming around the, the two squares or it's, it's basically one one square but two wires it just holds it a little better I think Right, and then you just try to work this down in there and you can cut off all these little excess uh, pieces like with what I showed you before if you want I don't think it's necessary it's just safety obviously you know just be safe in doing this and what helps too uh, with getting this down is you already need to cut off some of this so go ahead and cut around. Hi, baby. She's over there fishing with mom and dad. Her back still doesn't feel good, so she won't be on today's video. But go ahead and get this bent around like that. You can see how much that, that helped with cutting off the, the tip. Alright. Get another zip tie go ahead and, and zip tie it up a little further up because you're still gonna be cutting more off of that end it probably would help with another set of hands but you can definitely do it yourself it's no issues and you don't really need a whole lot you know it's just keeping it together because you will be adding more zip ties to this once it goes into the tube. Okay. Like that. And then from there, you can kind of get it shaped out a little better. And there's a nice little cone. Make sure you get your flush trimming cutters. Cut off your zip ties. 
And it's nice to have the, the flush trimming, which mine, I need to get new ones because they're a little on the bent side so they don't necessarily flush cut anymore. <laughs> it just stops you from cutting yourself with the zip ties. Okay. Now you want to have about a two, two to two and a half inch opening down at the bottom. So you can just kind of eyeball that. You don't need to 100% measure that out. At least I don't think you do. And if you really wanted to get you know fancy with this, you can always do like a little bit bigger, and you can even wrap you know wire in there, or even get you know other piece of metal to like a ring. To, to sit here and then wire that just to make it look you know nice and pretty and all that but it's not needed okay and that's one so do it again on your second one and I also wanted to show you a different way um, that you can also make the tube go around your cone so and I actually thought about this, and I was like, wait, let, let me show this other way, too. Uh, I think it would be easier for uh, folks to kind of figure it out. But go ahead and make your cone first. And then from there, you can come through and just start. So, obviously, your cone goes in. Not <laughs> and I like to leave, you know, a good one, two, three, four, five, six around you know six to eight squares empty uh, over on the side and the reason for that is to kind of help whenever you're emptying out the cage with the door you have a place to grab that doesn't have uh, critters in it with pinchers right and i mean it's it's not like super painful but i'm pretty sure you know most folks don't want to get uh, pinched by crawfish so go ahead and put that there and then you're just going to kind of walk this around so you get your your line of where you're putting zip ties And then you're just going around the circle. And until it's, it's all the way around. You just want to try to keep that circle, you know, in, in the middle, the, the small circle in the middle of your trap. And it's fighting me. The more zip ties you put in, the, the easier it will be to kind of hold all this together. Which I, I probably could have left the zip tie a little loose instead of pulling it tight. But the, the biggest thing with this of where the cone meets the the tube is that you don't want to have any gaps that they can swim through because whenever they're trapped inside here they're wanting to go into this area and if there's a big hole that's open they'll just swim right back out again and it kind of defeats the purpose of the trap so let me go ahead and i'll get this uh, finished tying up so you guys have seen uh, how we made the tube you've seen how we made the cones see how the cones get installed into the tube at least uh, w one way. You can always have the tube completely together and then you just push the, the cone in uh, to the, your desired area of where you want it to go. And, and then zip tie it all in. That's as, as long as all your math is correct. Of the, the size of your cone and the size of your tube match. Then you, you can push it in. 
Okay, once you got everything put in there, then you just trim off all of your zippy ties. And I'm not going to worry about putting zip ties down the tube yet until I get my other cone put in. That way it's, it's nice and uh, loose for me to install it. And uh, same thing. So I'll go ahead and uh, bring you guys back as soon as I'm done with the, the other side. And then we'll get a, a door put into this. And then we also got to build a bait box. Okay, that part is said and done. So if you have some type of weight that you can attach to the bottom of this, uh, you can do that. Or you can just take some rocks and put it down in the bottom. But now we need to go ahead and open up a door. So it doesn't really matter uh, the size of a said door, just as long as it's a door, right? You need to have access to get in there to get the, the critters out. So I'm gonna go ahead and what helps is you're, you're cutting out a section, but the door that you put back on here, you need to have from another piece because it needs to be able to overlap. So whatever size scrap you have and you're able to get your hand through there, that's what I would suggest uh, getting. So I think for me, I know I can do a, I did a nine on the other one. So I can do a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut out my door first. Now for this, because even if you have like little uh, hoses or little things that you can put on the edge of this to, to help with not cutting yourself, okay? But same thing like I said before, right? You can take those little tabs, you just bend that and it, it breaks right off, okay? As long as you don't have one stuck in your pliers. It just breaks right off. But I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, prepped. I'm going to get the opening prepped. And then we'll attach it. Then I still got to make a little uh, bait box. Something that we can put bait into. That they kind of have access to. But not the whole thing. Right? And then uh, we'll be ready to put in the water. Alright. So there's the door. It's installed. And I have on the base of the sides. It's one, one square you know overlap and then at the bottom it's a two two square overlap so right now i'm out of zip ties so uh, normally i would just put a zip tie in this just to keep the door closed and then you just cut it off and reinstall a new one as needed but i'm going to try using these these little uh, clips that i had and now it wants to just stick on everything Come off there. There we go. Okay, so I thought I was recording, and I guess I was not, but there we go. Uh, Dad has been saving some chicken. And it was frozen chicken. I actually had to hit it with a hammer. I don't know if you guys have seen that or not. Got it broken up, got it put into my little box that's on the inside. I can probably even bring it in closer. Bring it in closer so you can see. So there's our little food box. And then I like to close these doors off with a zip tie. That way it kind of lays flat. It doesn't leave an opening. But there it is. That's a finished trap. It's all put in. So they, they go in and then they can't swim back out. So we'll see, uh, see what happens. Let's see how many we get. Yeah, I went ahead and threw it out there, but I'm going to go ahead and bring it in just to show that we got everything tied off to the tree. Look at that, and I've already caught a fish. And just enough time to be able to walk around and go grab the camera. But it's all tied off to the tree. And then we're going to go ahead and take this and then toss it out. And then we wait. We'll come back and we'll check on it tomorrow and such but we definitely appreciate y'all for joining in on our journey today and just a few little updates and such 
it, this is one of those awesome projects and we're, we're glad that you know I was able to find well I'm happy I was able to find it online and and just know that I'll be able to do this myself and and such but like I said we're definitely appreciative that you guys are following in on our journey helping us grow it's greatly appreciated well I don't know what else to say but we got another video that you can check out here and then a playlist over here to be able to follow the entire year's journey icons at the top make it easy to subscribe both here and to our side channel the ivy's family or the the daily scuttlebutt with the ivy's family factotum wow and then last but not least get out there and thank a veteran at every chance you get not only on veterans day and we'll see you on the next one later y'all man i must be hungry or something <laughs>